Hi guys, my name is Marco Landry and thanks for tuning in. This is episode one of two episodes where I will talk about the 415 chain conversion on my Yamaha R3. So my plan today in this first episode is to document the process of removing the wheel, removing the chain. Once the wheel is off, we will remove the sprocket. I will also be replacing the mounting stud in the sprocket carrier to have some shorter and lightweight titanium studs to reduce the rotational mass or the unsprung weight. And once this is done, I will also be replacing the rotor as well to a, light, um, a lighter rotor. In episode two, we will complete the process by remounting everything and uh, fitting the 415 chain. So stay tuned and we'll start right now. So for the tools required uh, to do this, uh, this job today, you will need some uh, wrenches. So I have the 12 millimeter wrenches for the chain tensioner adjuster. I also have the uh, 30 millimeter impact wrench with the socket here that should be able to remove this uh, nut for the front sprocket. If not, I'll be uh, using the one in one eight uh, wrench here. Uh, the, the 14 millimeter socket will be used to remove the the, the, the bolts uh, from, or the nuts from the, the sprocket. I have my torque wrench as well uh, to torque to spec. I have the chain breaker. I also have some propane uh, to eat up the, the studs just in case they're really, really tight. I also have the 18 and 22 millimeter sockets and, and wrench uh, to remove the back wheel. So that should be most of the tools required for this job. So in terms of components, uh, I've bought a few different things. As you can see here, I have chains. Well, I got two of them, uh, but I only need one, obviously, for this, this work today. I got the front sprocket. This is the 18 two uh, sprocket. I got two different uh, rear sprocket, the 415 size as well, obviously, the 55 and the 57, depending on which track I'm going to go and ride on. I'll be able to change my gearing and I also will be replacing the rotor with the golfer uh, rotor in the back as well, which should be a bit lighter. I will also be replacing the front sprocket nut with a locking nut. The unit that you're seeing on the right is for the Yamaha R6, but it will also work on the R3. The top of the nut is a locking tab that will prevent it from becoming, uh, becoming loose. Uh, this is definitely the way to go if you place your sprocket. And uh, here's the Yamaha part number in case you want to order one for yourself as well. In terms of chemicals, I will be needing some Loctite chain lube and cleaner and also some uh, brake cleaner that I'll be using to clean uh, everything before we get this bike uh, back to normal. Here you have it guys, uh, that's, uh, that's the plan. So I'll uh, get organized here a little bit, we'll remove the back wheel and we will start uh, doing the work. Guys, so uh, when uh, you start doing this, obviously uh, the first thing that you want to do is to remove that nut. There's a few different ways of doing this. You can take something and jam it in here so that you, your wheel uh, will not spin. Like I normally just put like a piece of metal that's wrapped into a blanket or a towel, make sure it doesn't damage the wheel. The other option you can do as well is take your impact wrench uh, with the proper socket and try to do it like this while holding the wheels. I'm gonna start like this. If it doesn't work, we'll try option uh, number two. So let's, uh, let's get started here. All right, so that wasn't too, too bad. And the next step now will be to remove the, uh, the, 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 the wheel in the back. Then we will be able to break the chain and start working on, on the rear wheel. Removing the rear wheel, uh, you will need the 18 millimeter wrench and a 22 millimeter socket. OK, 
Okay, so now that we have uh, the wheel removed, we will break the chain and remove the front sprocket. And after that, I will start um, removing the studs from the, the carrier, the sprocket carrier in the back. Right. So we will now be removing the sprocket. And after I remove the sprocket, I'll remove the studs and replace them with the uh, shorter titanium studs. Turns out it was a bit tighter than what I was expecting. So what we're going to do now is that we're going to try to remove all these studs and replace them with the shorter studs. All right, so in order to remove these, we're going to use two, two nuts that came with the, uh, the kit that uh, Northern Motorsport provided. And I'm just going to secure them together and once this is done we'll we should in theory be able to uh to uh unscrew that stud from uh from the sprocket carrier make sure that they are tight together and then we can just simply take the bottom nut uh, to unscrew uh, to unscrew the uh, stud from the assembly. Here we go. So it's a bit tight, but once you have the proper grip, it should come out fairly easily. You can tell there's definitely a lot of, uh, of Loctite under, under this uh, or around this uh, the tread for this this stud here so just be patient and uh, it should come out okay all right so the uh, sprocket carrier has been removed as you can tell from the wheel here and um, I now have uh, the sprocket carrier without the studs so what I'm gonna do next is uh, clean this up make sure that uh, all these uh, holes are free of uh, old Loctite. And then once this is done, I'll put the uh, sprocket holder back onto the cush drive and we will remount uh, the new titanium studs. If it's really missing there, you can always use a tap uh, that will fit into these and just go through it a few times, make sure that it cleans up all the extra debris from the, the treads. But what I like to do normally is just take some brake cleaner and spray the brake cleaner into the different holes. And then what you can do as well is just use your uh, your tap again and go through it a few times, make sure that there's no debris. Uh, we are ready to reinstall the studs. So I just measured and you can see this is the uh, original one versus the replacement. So uh, they are substantially different there's an eight millimeter difference between the two of them the new one is in titanium so again eight millimeter shorter and also in terms of weight difference the six bolts and the six studs that are the oem option are 207 gram versus 105 grams for uh, the titanium one having said that I'm going to put a bit of Loctite and reassemble everything in place, make sure that everything's okay. The uh, specs for the torque is 27 nanometer and it's 20 foot per pound. And when you put your nuts back on after that, the torque spec for the nut is 68 nanometer or 49 uh, foot per pound. So uh, having said that, I'm going to start that process. And as I said earlier, the nice thing about these, uh, these new studs that you can use a four millimeter uh, wrench, like internal wrench and put them in place. So that's a lot easier to reassemble all of this. So I really like that concept. You don't need to have the, uh, the two nuts. You can still use the two nuts if you want. Uh, but I mean, if you are able to use this, uh, it's a lot easier, a lot easier to torque as well to specs. So first thing first, some tread locker. 
and I'm using the gel one here. Uh, obviously, you can use whatever uh, whatever works for you. And this is a new tube, so it takes a bit of time to uh, to push everything out. Oh, here we go. So now we got some some stuff coming out, and uh, again, you don't need a ton of this. You just need enough so that it will uh, cover uh, you know the uh, the bottom half, I would say, spread it around so that you don't have everything in one big lump. When you tread it in place, uh, it will uh, it will spread evenly. But I always like to make sure that it's uh, it's pretty even in the bottom half part because everything's being pushed up, so you don't need uh, a ton of it. And I'll just uh, snug them up, and after that, I'll use the torque wrench to to finish and torque everything to the proper specs. You need to set your right uh, measurement unit, which in my case, it's in nanometer, and the uh, torque spec are 27 for these studs. So uh, we'll get going and we'll, we'll tighten everything to spec. So this is the uh, the super light sprocket, and as I mentioned earlier, I have two of them because the first few track days that I will be doing will be on a, on a much faster track as opposed to a short track. So I want to have some gearing that will allow me to go faster, obviously, as opposed to having more torque. I will start, and this is just me guessing. But I will start with the 55 to uh, sprocket. And uh, if that doesn't work, I'll switch to a different type of sprocket after that. I have the 58 now as well. I have the 57 coming. I also ordered a 56. And I can always change the front sprocket as well. So with, uh, with those eight different options, I should be covered. If not, I'll go um, over a different combo and do some trial and error. But I think that that's going to work well for uh, the first few track days. So in order to install this, uh, normally you want the markings to be facing up. It's super difficult to see here, but you can see some, some markings. So the markings will be facing towards the outside of the bike. Make sure that it fits in properly. It's nice and, and, and solid. The nuts that came with the, that titanium kit are um, just regular nut, they're not nylock. The OEM have nylock uh, locking uh, mechanism on them. So this one doesn't have any nylock. So I'll put a dab of blue Loctite on all of these just to be on the safe side. And again, it's not gonna be a lot, just a tiny little bit. That should be more than enough. So that's going to make a big difference because these studs are so much shorter than the other one. Uh, I think that's going to be that's going to be looking great, and also the convenience as well when you're changing wheels, not having these long studs that are protruding out will be a good advantage in my opinion. So now I'm just going to take the torque wrench, and as I mentioned. We're going to torque this to uh, 68 nanometer, which is 49 foot pound. So again, as usual, you just make sure that once you have your torque wrench that you set it up to the right measurement unit and also the right uh, torque spec. So here we go. So now I'm just going at 68. And we'll crisscross this. I'm not going to go all the way right away. I'm just going to do some crisscross pattern and uh, make sure that we don't go just on one side and then your sprocket ends up being uneven. So we're just going to do some crisscross pattern here. All right, so everything looks good. We'll just do one last check all around. All 
All right, so this is done. So now we can flip the wheel and start working on replacing the back rotor. All right, so now the next step is to uh, replace the rotor on the back wheel or the disc on the back wheel. Before I do so, I've been very unfortunate. Every time I remove a rear rotor or a front rotor, I snap a bolt. So this time I'm gonna take my time. I'm gonna apply some heat on those three bolts. And then after that, uh, using the, um, the six millimeter internal X wrench, I'll remove these three bolts. So uh, with, without any further ado, we will apply some heat. And I don't think we need a lot of heat. I just need to apply just a little bit so that the Loctite now will uh, be a bit warmer. And hopefully that's going to do the trick here. Here we go. I got one here. All right, so now that it's all loosened up, we'll be able to use the T-handle X tool here and remove all of this. And I'll have to do the same thing as we did with the, with the studs on the air side of the wheel. I'll just clean up everything properly, make sure there's no Loctite left in those holes and then we will reassemble the new rotor. So what I'm going to do now, before I install this new uh, golfer uh, rotor, I'm going to go inside and see if there's a big weight uh, difference between the two units. I mean, this one is, it's not super heavy. But I got a feeling that this one might be a bit lighter, so I'm not sure about, about this yet. So, yeah, so we can see there's not as much metal, so it's definitely going to be a bit of a weight difference. So I'll go inside and, uh, and put this on the scale and see what type of difference we will get. I did a bit of work uh, off camera. I've cleaned up these holes like I did uh, initially on the other side of the wheel. So I just took the torch, uh, torch everything out, took a little brush, clean uh, the treads properly. And then when I take my, my rotor bolts and I tread them now, I can tread them just with my fingers with no extra pressure or no extra gunk uh, stuck in those treads. So this is really critical before you reassemble the new, uh, the new rotor. So this is the new rotor that I will install on the wheel. And uh, similar to the sprocket, I'm making sure that the layers or the markings are facing up uh, towards the outside of the bike. You just align it with the holes properly here. And then I will apply uh, some lock treads on all the, uh, the bolts and uh, tighten this in a, you know, in a crisscross pattern again, and even though there's only three bolts, it's not much of a crisscross pattern, but I'll go from, uh, from top to bottom to, uh, to left. So it's basically just going around. And uh, in terms of weight saving, this rotor is 250 gram, uh, well, approximately 250 grams lighter than the OEM one. So there's still some weight savings uh, that are being realized here as well. So overall, uh, the, the uh, unsprung uh, weight uh, will be reduced by, uh, no, by probably about uh, no, maybe uh, 300 grams, 250 grams. And you know, having the uh, lighter chain is gonna make a big difference as well. Having the lighter sprocket is gonna make a big difference. So all of these things add up and uh, you know, obviously we will see some, uh, some weight reductions here as well. And the weight reduction will make the, the bike easier to turn and uh, it's going to be a lot quicker to brake as well. So these are some of the advantages of, uh, of having less uh, unsprung weight. 
So the, the torque specs for this will be uh, 23 nanometers. So uh, again, similar to what I did on the, uh, on the sprocket, I'll, I'll just snug these up and then we'll use the torque wrench to complete the process. I must admit that this is a much nicer look as well. I always like the, uh, the wave pattern of, uh, of the golfer's uh, rotor. I have them on, the, on a few of my uh, wheels for the R6 as well. Always been uh, very, very happy and very pleased. Uh, the service with Golfer has been amazing as well. I had to call them a couple of times and they've been uh, just outstanding. So everything is good, everything's solid. And this, uh, this wheel is all set to go. The only thing that I'll do now is that I'll reinstall the uh, captive spacers that I removed earlier. And once the captive spacers are on, we will uh, put the wheel back on the bike and then we'll take care of the chain and we'll replace the chain. So one thing that I'd like to do as well, uh, once you got everything installed, is to put a little bit of a, a dab of paint. Like so there's like these special uh, markers. You've probably seen me using this in previous videos, like one of these. Uh, the tip is quite, uh, quite big on this one, but I got some other options where the tip is a bit smaller allows you to do a nice line and uh, visually you can tell if something has been moving. So normally on the track, uh, just before I go out, I will do uh, like a check around the bike and make sure that all these lines are lined up properly. So if it was to move, you would see that this, the two lines would be out of alignment. So it really gives you a quick visual indication of how tight uh, the bolts are. So uh, just a good practice and makes your life a lot easier. Thanks for watching. This concludes the first part of the process of the 415 chain conversion. Please click on the video to continue watching or look me up on my YouTube channel at Landry555 for part two of this uh, video.